up everyone? We've just arrived here in Baradero, a really popular beach destination here in Cuba. We came here from Cienfuegos. It took us about three hours. Once again, we got in a taxi colectivo for $20. If we got the bus, I think it would have took six hours, so twice as long. And the bus was only $4 cheaper each. So yeah, we decided to get in the taxi once again. I think we're already just gonna head to the beach. We don't really wanna just stick around here in the guest house. I'll just show you the guest house quickly. This one was $30. So it's a bit more expensive than the other places that we've been staying, but it's like a one minute walk from the beach. So yeah, pretty good. Carol's dying from the heat. <laughs> Over here we just have the little bathroom. Looks actually pretty nice. And yeah, fridge and AC and, and what? Coffee. Coffee? Oh, coffee. <laughs> she means like the locker, that's how you say it in Portuguese. Alright, I think we need to go to the beach. <laughs> Let's go. Should get one of these, right? Yeah, it's your heart. <laughs> yeah. Man, look at that though. Crazy. So we just got ourselves two seats here. It was two dollars each, not too bad. That's the same I paid in uh, the south, and the beach there wasn't anywhere near as nice as this. I can honestly say I think this is one of the nicest beaches that I've ever been to already. Been here one minute. This is just insane. Yeah, I can't wait to get in there. How beautiful is this place? <laughs> very, very beautiful. It's literally like a million times nicer than I expected. Yeah. Not only the beach, but also the city. Yeah, it's not that bad the place we're staying, right? So apparently a lot of backpackers skip here because it's mainly like an uh, all-inclusive resort kind of place, like really touristy. But the place we're staying is more like a local part, I think. There's no hotels or anything. So nobody's been bothering us at all in the street at all. And you still get the incredible beaches. Just, yeah, absolutely beautiful. And another crazy thing is um, we're basically on like a peninsula. And that is what Baradero is. So this is 20 kilometers of just beach and ocean like this. So yeah, 20 kilometers of paradise. <laughs> Swimming pool. Yeah. yeah. Swimming pool blue. So far on this trip, we've been extremely lucky with the weather. Like almost every day, the forecast was saying that it was going to be like rainy and thunderstorms, even today. I mean, there's a lot of clouds forming now, but yeah, every day it's just been sun all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a beach like this, like this clean. I don't think I've ever seen one where there's like zero coral, zero like seaweed or anything it's pretty much just absolutely clean and the uh, sand is like beautiful soft white sand so yeah just incredible definitely have to come here if you love beaches and if you're in cuba After the beach yesterday, we didn't really do anything. 
We've just gone to some like little local cafe. Quite a nice looking place though. Check this out. Like a little shack. Yeah, the paintings. All around Cuba you always get cool paintings everywhere. They're very good painters. One behind me as well, check this out. Havana Club. And if you check the menu here, this place actually has really good prices. So, me and Carol both got some, uh, what is it? Goyaba. Yeah, Hugo de Goyaba. Goyaba juice, really tasty. And that is uh, $1. I'm also ordering the sandwich, a tuna sandwich, $3.50. And what did you order? Tortilla. Omelette, which one? This one here. Oh, okay. And that's $2, so yeah. With yeah. Bread and vegetables. Yeah, pretty good. I thought the prices here in Baradero would be a lot more expensive, but even last night I had a huge pizza for only $4, so yeah, even here it's still really cheap. Surprising. <music> Check it out, got some more cool cars that you always see around Cuba. So the majority of those cars that you see, those really old ones, they're Fords and Chevrolets from the 50s. And before I came to Cuba, obviously I knew that there was cars like that. It's one of the main th images of Cuba, right? But I didn't realize like the whole island, it would just be everybody driving around in those things. You do see a few more modern cars, but yeah, mo most of the time it's just those cars. For a tourist, it's just awesome to see. And here you can see what I was telling you about before. We're in like, kind of like a local part, but um, there's no colonial buildings here. It's more like modern buildings. Still very colorful and Cuban looking, so yeah, it still looks very nice around here, the neighborhoods. I'd come back to the beach again. This video is basically just going to be me, me filming the same thing over and over. <laughs> I don't think I mentioned before, but we're actually here for three days. So, yeah, we're just going to be three days around this part here. Ocean's way stronger today, but still not too bad. And you can see behind here, we've actually come to a part where it kind of looks more natural. This is what I guess the island would have looked like in its natural form. Just, yeah, coconut trees nature everywhere So you've probably noticed in all my Cuba videos so far, everywhere has been kind of empty. Here, all the beds and stuff, pretty much empty. All the other places we went weren't very busy at all. So I found out that I think a few months back, I think it was in March, Trump actually banned all American cruise ships from coming to Cuba. So that's like had a really significant impact on the tourism here. I think in July last month, they said uh, tourism was down 25% which was roughly 90 to 100,000 people. So before you had all those Americans coming in on the cruise ships and yeah, now you don't have that anymore. It obviously affects the people here a lot. We spoke with quite a few locals. Yeah, and they said it's a lot harder now with all that tourism lacking. I wouldn't like it if I was American and I couldn't really come here because here's one of the closest islands in the Caribbean to America and also the cheapest. And pretty much all the tourists here are from Europe. I think there's a few Canadians, but Americans, I don't think I've ran into any Americans. So yeah, that's the reason why everywhere is pretty empty. I would obviously prefer 
them to have a good relationship and Americans be able to come here and I'm pretty sure Americans would like that too since so many were visiting so yeah hopefully they work that out in the future <laughs> So we were just on our way to head to some Cuban bar to have dinner and we thought we might as well come down to the beach once again to see the sunset. We haven't even caught any sunsets here in Cuba so far. Probably see I'm pretty burnt from, from today, got way too much sun. But yeah, hopefully the sunset's going to be good here. Quite a lot of people are here, isn't there, Carol? Yeah, I think there's more people now than... Yeah, than, than when there was sun. Yeah, this place is quite busy. What's the name of this place again? La Bodeguita del Medio. La Bodeguita del Medio. <laughs> like a chain right we ate at this place in Playa del Carmen in Mexico yeah it looked the same as well the handwriting everywhere graffiti pretty cool and some instruments there. I'm not sure if there's gonna be live music we'll find out what are you gonna eat oh the filete de pescado so that's here, um, nine dollars. I think I'm gonna go for this Creole codfish, eight ninety-five. now that Cuban restaurant was awesome we kind of already knew that because uh, we've been in Mexico to the same restaurant always amazing food and amazing live music probably the best live music we've heard on this entire trip and this is the end of our trip in Cuba been here 10 days now uh, for, the, for those of you that haven't seen the other videos we went to Havana, Trinidad, Cienfuegos and here in Baradero and yeah this is a great place to to end the, the holiday and just relax before before we leave to Mexico tomorrow. And I thought I'd just do a quick review of my thoughts on Cuba. It's definitely been one of the most interesting countries that I've ever traveled to, just because it's so different in appearance and yeah, just the way things work here, everything's a bit different. And one thing that's actually surprised me is that you guys probably know that Cuba receives a lot of negative press from Western media, right, for being like a socialist country in this region. I only ever seem to see bad things spoke about it. So it's been really interesting to come here and see it with my own eyes for Carol as well, because uh, we didn't really know what to expect, you know what I mean? And we probably did expect some negative things, but like I said, some things surprised me when I compare it to other countries in Latin America, I've been to quite a lot. For, for example, one of the main things is here, we didn't really seem to see like extreme poverty. Obviously there is poverty here, you can see that, but what I mean by extreme is like, if you go to Brazil or places in Central America, you'll see all the, the slums and everything, big slums. Here there's no real slums or favelas. There's some run down buildings, but I don't think they're really favelas. Like in Havana, we saw some really old buildings, but they were just, 500 year old colonial buildings that are just old. It's not really a slum. Another surprising thing is I think during our whole 10 days here we saw one homeless person and just one beggar. Every country that I've been to so far in Latin America and even the United States in the Americas you always see quite a lot of homeless people and you don't get that here probably 
I guess because of the socialism, I don't know, the equality. Pretty sure that must be one of the reasons. One of the best things that I've noticed is actually the crime here as well. Uh, from what we've seen, it feels really safe here compared to other yeah, Latin American countries that we've been to. And from speaking with the people, they all, they all kind of seem to say, yeah, it is safe. There is some like petty crime, like robberies and stuff, pickpockets, but from talking with the people, there's nothing like someone robbing you at knife point or gunpoint and things like that. So that's really surprised me. And people said you can walk around here at like 4 a.m., things like that. So yeah, that, all, that kind of stuff is just really impressive. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't think no Western media talk about that kind of thing. They they don't want to, apparently. On the other hand, though, there is the negative side that people here don't really earn a lot of money. That's why everything's so cheap here for a tourist. And um, yeah, that's what the, the locals, some of the locals kind of said to us. They can't really afford anything materialistic, just the kind of like simple life that they have here. You still see people with nice modern cars and some nice houses and stuff. It's not like everybody's kind of poor. But yeah, there, there is that aspect of it for sure. That might even be the reason why um, here I kind of feel like there's a lot of scams. When you go around, it does always seem like people are trying to get your money kind of thing. So um, yeah, there is that aspect of it for sure. And I'm pretty sure that anybody that comes here will actually see that it's probably a bit better than they imagine, I think. It's not, it's not that screwed up from what I couldn't see. But hey, I'm just looking from, from the outside right in. Anyway. I'm gonna stop rambling on. Um, just thanks for watching. Uh, drop a like on the video to support me. Subscribe if you haven't already and you like to see more videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.